Dr. Alio, it's been a pleasure knowing you over the years. You are a true diamond in the rough as far as ophthalmologists go, and we're happy to hear you present today. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to introduce you to the varifocal concept, which is the one in which this family of lenses, the, the Acunex, which is a, the name of Thelion Surgical, in which a new material is used. Uh, let me first have a perspective of what we are doing today and what do we have available in the market with premium IUS. We have diffractive, basically trifocal. <clears throat> All the other uh, bifocal models have disappeared and they are doing quite well. They are part of our practice and indeed are the ones that are more frequently used because they, the worldwide dissemination of these lenses is better. Then we have the refractive, which can be rotational, symmetrical, or sector varifocal, which is the one that we are going to deal with today. Rotational symmetrical has the disadvantage that has been previously mentioned that the dispersion of light is about 20% and creates halos and glare, which are significant, while the sector varifocal have distinctive advantages that are going to show to you that makes this a uh, faulty phenomenon to be very rare or even absent depending on the power that you, in which you base the lens. Then we have the ear of lenses, which is a very confusing concept, full of, of fake news, really. And we, let me show to you what is my classification of ear of. The ear of type 1 for me are those lenses that are based on manipulation of the spherical aberration. Most of them have failed in my hands and I'm not using any longer. Type 2 are the pinhole principle that have this type of design. They are good for regular astigmatism, but they constrict the peripheral visual field at 60 degrees. The type 3 are the low near vision art. That means lenses that with the defocus curve, you can really elongate the, fo the, 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 the focus for far, uh, gaining lines for near. They are very unsensitive and a little bit unsensitive to this photopsia. And on top of that, you can use monovision added to this type of lens. Type 4 are hybrid multifocal. This is the most frequent uh, model used by most of the doctors. They are really not a, a, a of lenses, but, a, a, but low near vision up diffractive models in which we have, like in the symphony, some a multifocality based on optical power, but minimal on it of. And then fi finally, we have the type 5, which are optical center modification with vivid and hands, which are very new and they are already uh, available in the market. Diffractive technologies, I, I have to mention them again because they have a di distinctive disadvantages as loss of light with less contrast sensitivity. The average loss is about 12 to 17%, depending on the models. They, they cause a permanent overlapping of images with increased the, the, the halos and the glare, which is one consequence in which the, you have to, to really believe that you will find in every one type of, the, of diffractive lenses. <clears throat> and as a consequence, you have a loss of image quality, which is enhanced by the diffraction and pupillary margin. So these are the main pitfalls of diffractive technologies. On the contrary, by the focal technologies, you have a very important issue. You have most of the lens to be monofocal because only one third of the lens is focusing for near and this sector is the only one in which the light is, is uh, used for this purpose. We have more lights for the far focus which increases the contrast sensitivity actually. The lenses do not affect contrast sensitivity and don't have loss of this function. You have less superimposition of images with minimal halos and glare. And, the, and if you use a 1.5 model, basically you don't have any halos and any glare because there is no superimposition of images. And as a consequence, you have better image quality without the effect of scattering of light by the diffraction, which is a very important issue that is present in the diffractive technologies. So let me go a little bit more in the varifocal constant. Varifocal constant lenses are those lenses in which there is an, a progressive increase in the optical power of the lens in a given meridian. That means that you have a progressive increase in the power. It's not a sharp decrease. It's not a dividing in segments or in or the prismatic effect as it happens in the diffracting. This is just one lens in which one meridian is making a, a, a focus on continuous basis. This is why these lenses are in low near vision art, providing a little of uh, uh, effect. This is the, the sector varifocal uh, lenses that, remember, are those that are refractive, but that are uh, rotational asymmetrical. This is the design, this is the design in the plate haptic lens. You have been listening to previous presentations with this plate haptic, or now with a C-loop, uh, with a new Teleon 
and the new material that has been manufacturing uh, by, by Telium company with these optics, you have definitely a lot of advantages because the, especially in the low near vision art, you have zero halo, zero glare, and you have a need of uh, uh, principle. So you have far vision, which is about 60% of the lens, and near vision, which is about 30% of the lens. You see how the transition of the light in the optical system of the eye is going from one a focus for far to near in a in a progressive way in a way that you don't have any any break in the in the in the in the, in the focusing capabilities of the optical system of the eye and this is how varifocality works. It's indeed a very neat uh, uh, concept. Uh, now let me explain to you why I choose a varifocal lens and which are the, my, my 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 principles to choose a lens. I ask and I demand to my lenses, the ones that I select for my patients, to have optical performance optimal. They should have an excellent optical performance, both in the optical bench and, of course, inside the eye. Remember that the eye is an off-center system and diffractive technologies are sensitive to decentration. These lenses are very little sensitive to decentration because of this concept. Content sensitivity should be left untouched because the main reason for expansion is bad quality of vision. This doesn't happen with this very focal technology because they leave the content sensitivity untouched. I want them to be stable inside the casual back. I usually use a CTR, casual attention ring, when I'm using the M plus 3, but with the M plus 1.5, as far as the stability is so good and, there, and this unsensitiveness to the centration is happening, you don't need in the low power 1.5, the, 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 the length is comfort to use a CTRs. I want to reliable the focus curve. I told you this, the, the focus curve is in the range of and the edge of lens, and it's a transition from the far to intermediate and for to near to a certain extent in a continuous basis. And of course, we need medical evidence of the performance in well-performed and independent clinical studies. The test of time is indeed the last, uh, the last condition. Those lenses that have been already in the market for five or more years, you have a, a, a lot of evidence about how they perform. This is how I use now the, the varifocal team. I use the Teleon lenses. The Teleon is an extension from the previous technology using a new material which is hydrophobic, which in my opinion has different advantages. You have the monofocal Aconex and the Aconex Vario, which is the equivalent to lenses comfort. It's exactly the same lens, but c -Loop. And then you have the Aconex Vario Max, which is the M plus 3. Um, you have, uh, with this uh, combination of lenses, a uh, different profiles. The far dominant is perfectly accomplished with the M plus 1.5, the, the comfort, and in the Teleon lens as well. You, if you have a near dominant, then you need a high near vision arc, which is the M plus 3. The intermediate dominant is very frequent today and is fully accomplished with the um, lens discomfort. But you have also the intolerant dominant, those spaces that because of the character or because the performance that they have or because the demands and the highly uh, 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 specific demands that they have for vision, they are very unwilling to tolerate this photopsia or any halos and glare. You cover this indeed with the M plus 1.5, the length is comfort. With the, uh, with the concept of the varifocality. In the video, we have published about 12 to 15 papers on this topic in which we have covered all the different aspects from the implantation of the 1.4 to the, the, the plus 3. And uh, recently, in the urinary refractory surgery, we have published the combination of blended vision with the 1.5 with the dominant and the plus 3 in the non-dominant with a tremendous success that is really remarkable. You have all this information and more in this second edition of my book on multifocal intraocular lenses, the art and the practice, and we display all these concepts in extension in this uh, book that we are invited to use. And this is a new factory from Teleon in which the Acunex and the Acunex Vario and the Acunex Vario Max are now manufactured with this high the sort of fraction uh, hydrophobic material, which is indeed, in my opinion, a tremendous step forward in this technology. And I thank you very much for your very kind attention. Of course, Dr. Alio joins us from the Vism Institute, which certainly does sparkle diamond-like. You know, what a great place. And thanks for joining us, Dr. Alio.